Hey guys and welcome to this video. So if you clicked on this video you probably want to know a bit more about 3D printing and the different slicer settings. Maybe you bought the 3D printer or you just want to know more about it. So today I'm going to show you some test prints and explain to you the different printer settings that you have to consider. Thanks to 3DK Berlin for providing the filament used in this video. They have a wide selection of PLA in any imaginable color. And if you want to grow your filament selection, they have a subscription service where you get two spools of filament plus an extra goodie delivered to your door every month. Check them out in the link below. If you are starting out with 3D printing, it can be quite difficult to get nice 3D prints because there are so many sightings in the slicer to consider. So now I'm gonna show you the most important ones of them and show you in the form of a test print how they affect your end result. So let's start off with temperature. So most filament you buy, it will have a sticker on it which says an about temperature range which you will use it. Mostly about like from 180 to 220 for PLA or something in that range. Now depending on your 3D printer, a very few degrees difference can make quite a big difference in the print result. So if you have a look at this close up picture from a print that was made with too high temperature, here I use 240 degrees on PLA, which is quite a bit too much. So you can see that there is a lot of bad stringing and the overhangs and also the details aren't there at all because the lines are very irregular and don't look that nice. This is because when the filament gets laid down, it is very liquid and it also stays longer that way and so it has time to flow in whatever direction it wants. But on the positive side, this print will have very good layer adhesion because the filament flows into all the nicks and crannies and fuses together very good. So if all you want is good layer adhesion you maybe have to bump your temperature up a bit. On the other side we have this print which is really cold. It was printed at around 180 degrees, which on my 3D printer is much too cold to print in any filament. As you can see, the details here are very nice. That's because the filament doesn't flow around much at all because it is really stiff when it comes out. But on the bad side, it has very bad layer adhesion and you can't print too fast because the filament can't be pushed through that well if it isn't that so hot and you maybe get other problems as well. So you need to find a bit of a balance. If you want more detail you can go for a bit of a colder temperature but if you need more strength then you have to bump your temperature up a bit. The ex exact temperature you need on your 3D printer I can't tell you because it varies from model to model. The temperature probes aren't so precise in every one and um, the design of the hot end varies a bit. So just experiment around a bit and you can refer to the pictures if you want to know if your print is too hot or too cold. So let's get to the next point. Speed. This is very dependent on your 3D printer. Some printers can print very fast and still be accurate. Other printers you have to print extremely slow because they aren't built as well. So I'm just gonna show you these two close-ups here. One was printed at around 200% speed and one at 50% speed. Of my normal print speed that is to say. And you can see that this lower print of course has a lot more detail and is a lot more defined. That's because all the mechanics can work properly and they aren't overly used in any way. But on the flip side the print takes a lot longer. So if you want the part fast this isn't the best option for you. On the fast part on the other hand you have to I have to mention that this is, this is a lot exaggerated. I would never in my life print that fast. And you can see that the mechanics didn't hold up to this task that well as 
in the corners the print head went around the corner and then when it wanted to go in the other direction it went over a little bit and so you can see that there is almost a bit of a wave form around the corner. That is really ugly and will mess up the sizing of your parts. So if you see that you really need to get down your print speed a bit. You can also see that some of the corners lifted up here because they weren't printed properly, the printer rushed through there, the, not all the detail is preserved and you can see it can lead to some other artifacting as well. So you, ne you need to find a speed that your printer is comfortable at printing without messing your parts up. Many 3D printer manufacturers will specify a number that you can start off with and then experiment a bit for your own. Also closely related to the overall print time is the layer height. That's just how high the single layers the printer makes are. Of course if these layers are higher your print time goes down drastically as the printer has to do less layers and therefore is finished faster. But if you make smaller layers then your print is more accurate as it can have more detail. Let's just take a look at this close up picture and you can rather drastically see the difference. On the left here I printed with a 0.3mm layer height which is about the maximum you can go with a 0.4 or 0.5mm nozzle and you can see that you can really make out the, the layers and it is almost like a staircase effect. But on the other hand this print was really fast and so if you only want to get a rough idea how the part will look like you can consider a layer height of up to 0.3 millimeters. Going more over to the right we have 0.2 and 0.1 millimeter layer height and that's more where I usually print as this gives you a lot more detail you can see that the print is a lot smoother just ignore the other artifacts that you can see that's because the model wasn't done that well and I had some issues with my printer there but you almost can't really make out the single layers there as they are much smaller and if you sand that down a bit you get a really smooth piece. On the other hand this piece on the right took a lot longer to print than the one on the left as there were three times as many layers to make. My everyday printing layer height is 0.15. That's for me a, a nice middle ground between the speed and accuracy. If you need something a bit faster I go up to 0.2 or 0.25 but that's about the maximum I go. The next point is a tricky one. That was a point where I had a lot of trouble in the beginning with my printer as it wasn't set up properly and so I had a lot of prints that didn't come out that good. And that is extrusion. How much material should come out? Now typically your printer will have be calibrated roughly if when you get it and it should be okay. But in case you, it isn't okay you need to adjust that. Because as you can see in this close up here, here there is extruded far less material than it has to. This one I printed at 50% extrusion and you can really see what the 3D printer did. The two outer shells aren't even fused together, they are completely separate which shouldn't be the case at all and the solid infill in the middle is more like a perforated mesh. Now this is a really best case scenario for a 3D print which has too little extrusion. Mostly you will see very messed up sides with sometimes big holes as the filament can't really get to it. And you will know if it extrudes too little, you will know, believe me. And you really need to fix that. On the other hand, over extrusion isn't that easily noticeable sometimes. But if it is as extreme as in this case which I printed at 150 percent 
you can really see that there is just too much material around. It gets squished out at the sides and on top and everywhere as it has nowhere to go. These parts will often have details that aren't that visible and other artifacts. And on the top layer especially it isn't flat but has little hills where the filament got squished out. These parts will also be a bit bigger than they are supposed to be. So if you measure your part and it is should be 2 cm like this block, but this block here which I over extruded is around 2.1. So you really need to get the feel right for that, but that it isn't this too difficult. Just print some flat thing and on the top layer you usually can tell really well if it is more like a perforated mesh or if it has material squished out. And then you need to adjust the flow rate of your extruder. That you ha usually don't have to do that more than once as it shouldn't change at all. And lastly there is one more point which I didn't regard at all when I began and that is that you shouldn't cheap out on the filament too much. If you bu just buy the cheapest filament on eBay from China somewhere you probably don't get that nice of prints. Because these filaments don't have a constant diameter and even if there are only slight differences, the extrusion will vary during your print and on some parts it looks like over extrusion and then a moment later it's under extrusion again. And also these get your nozzle jammed a lot more often because they have things that burn or little particles in them. So it really is a good idea to invest in some decent filament, for example from 3K Berlin, and your prints will get a lot better and you don't have to deal with even more difficulties than just the print settings I explained to you. Now there are some really expensive filaments out there for like 80 euros or bucks per kilogram. You don't need those typically to begin with. Just some good quality PLA will do the trick. So that's it for this video. If you learned something and you liked the video, please leave a like down below and also consider to subscribe for more videos like this. I also have Twitter and Instagram handles linked down below that you can check out. Thanks for watching and until next time.